everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can build custom functions with Power Automate. So to do this, we're going to use the new Lambda function. So this is a new function that allows you to build your own custom functions in Excel. And if you haven't seen this before, I've got a video on it. So I'm going to leave the link to that video in the description below. You can check that out. And we're going to use this to build custom functions with Power Automate. So I've got an example here that I've already built. So I've built this user function. And what it does is it takes an email address from your Office 365 tenant, and then it's going to return data about that user. So what's happening is this custom user function is calling Power Automate, and then there's an Office 365 connector in Power Automate that's returning data about our user and then returning that into Excel. So let's take a look at how I built this. So the first thing that I did was I set up this flow in flow.microsoft.com, and this is an automated flow, so it's triggered by this action here. So when an HTTP request is received, that's what's gonna trigger this flow. And we'll see how that actually works in Excel later on. So we're gonna use this URL that's generated to trigger it from Excel. Now we have to make sure that we're using a get method here. So in the advanced options here for this trigger, just we're going to select get as our method. And then the next action that I've got down here is the Office 365 connector, and we can get a user profile. So we can pass in an email address and then get all sorts of data about that user. Now, how we get this email from Excel into our flow is via a parameter that we're going to append on the end of this URL. And then we can use a expression here to get the value of that parameter into our flow. So if I just hover over this, you can see that the expression that's being used is this trigger outputs. And then there's a section in the trigger outputs for queries. And then the name of my parameter is going to be email address. So that expression is going to get the value of my parameter. And then we're going to use the value of that parameter to get a user profile. Now to send that data back to Excel, we're going to use the response action. And then the response that we're going to send, we can send some content from our get user profile. So there's all sorts of data in here and I've just picked out a couple so you can add more, but I've just got the display name, job title, department and country. And then you can see that I've separated each of those by a delimiter. So I've used a semicolon as the delimiter and that's going to be important. And it's going to allow us to separate out the data once it's back inside Excel, because this is going to be all sent to Excel as a single piece of text. And we're going to need those to separate the text out. So that's saved and we can copy this URL and we can head over to Excel. So we're back in Excel. Let's see how we can call that flow from inside of Excel. So to do that, we're going to use the web service function. So the web service function takes a URL and then returns data from that URL. So it takes this URL as a text value. So we are going to need some quotation marks and then we can paste in our URL from our flow. And if I press enter, we're going to get a value error. So remember our flow is expecting that email address parameter. And without that, our flow is not going to be able to get a user from the office 365 connector, and we're not going to get anything returned. And that's actually going to cause our flow to fail and we don't get anything back. So this is what that value error means. So let's fix that. So let's add in our parameter on the end here. So we're going to use an ampersand to add on our parameter. And remember that was email address that we used in our flow. 
and then we're going to dynamically set that parameter of email address equal to, and then we're going to concatenate on a value from a cell in the grid. So when I press enter, that returns uh, this value here. So this is a single text value and it's just my name and my job title, my department and my country. And it's all concatenated together with this semicolon thing. Now we can separate that out by using a function that I've already built with uh, uh, Lambda functions to split text. So I built this function text split and it takes some text as the first argument, which is going to be this stuff that the web service returns. And then it takes a second argument, which is the delimiter to split by. And then each of those values gets into its own separate cell. And then this is the formula that we're going to use in our Lambda to create a more simplified version with the Lambda function. So I've already built the Lambda function here and let's just take a quick peek at it. So here you can see the web service function that we used and that's the value that's going to be returned by this Lambda. So the Lambda I've set up a single parameter as the input and I've called that email. So this function is going to take one value as input and it's going to be an email address. And then you can see in the web service function here, I'm calling that email input to append as my URL parameter here. So this part of my function here is going to be that long text string separated by semicolons. And inside the, the let function that allows me to just name that something simple. So I've named that flow and the value of flow is going to be that web service function. And then I'm also defining something called user data. And then I'm defining it as text split of the flow based on the semicolon delimiter. And the last thing here is I'm just returning this user data that I defined up here. And so that's going to be the output of my let function. And this let function is going to be the output of my Lambda function. So to build our Lambda function, now we can take this part of the function. And if we head up to our formula tab, we can go to the name manager and create a new name if we haven't already built it, but I've already built it here. So I'm just going to edit this and we'll take a look at that. So I've given it the name user, and this is how we're going to call our Lambda function. And then I've given a little description. So this user function returns data from our office 365 tenant. And then I've just gone ahead and pasted that Lambda function in there. And once you close it, then you're going to have access to your new user function. And it takes the single email address and returns our data from our Office 365 tenant. So that's how you can build custom functions in Excel using the Lambda function and Power Automate. So we can use the web service function to call Power Automate and then send data back to Excel from Power Automate for our function to return. Now this function is just getting and returning data, but there's no reason why you can't do other things in your flow. So this is essentially a way to trigger a flow in Power Automate via an Excel formula. And so you can do just about anything in there. So you could send emails from your formula or create files in SharePoint, etc. Whatever you can do in Power Automate, you can trigger it from this Excel formula. So this opens up a pretty crazy world of things you can do with an Excel formula in combination with Power Automate. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. 
That's it for this one. See you in the next video.